and we are live. Welcome to The Batman 2022 Review and Thoughts. I am Batman. I am Vengeance. I am the Knight. I am impressed by a movie featuring Batman. It's, it's nice. I, I kind of forgot what it felt like. It's been a decade. Now, usually I take my time with these videos, but my back... I'm starting to sound like a broken record, so I'm not going to go too much into it. Suffice it to say, I'm going to try to see if this goes a little easier on my back, so I am going to kind of speed run this review. So, real quick, yeah, so, worst to best, solo, wait, yeah, worst to best, solo, not DCU, Batman movies, Robin, Forever, Returns, 89, Begins, Rises, Dark Knight, and I, this is, I, right now this is tied with Dark Knight. I, I'm not 100% certain if it overall tops it. I don't think it's the very best DCEU film. I do still think 2021 Suicide Squad is better than this movie. But, yeah. So, let's see. Yeah, real quick. Once Christopher Nolan finished off his excellent trilogy, I was 100% ready for something completely different from the Bruce Wayne Batman. I've long wanted something like Grayson, the trailer for which is still here on YouTube, although obviously by today's standards it's low resolution and dated effects. Maybe a Nightwing movie. I would 100% be down for a Batman Beyond. Before this movie, I wasn't really that hyped for more Bruce Wayne Batman, but yeah, I love this movie. I am looking forward to both of the sequels. And I'm told there are also going to be spin-offs, and one of them is going to focus on Colin Farrell's... So apparently he doesn't like it when you call him Penguin, so Oz. He goes by Oz in this. And apparently it's going to be like Scarface, like the... the not, not the 1932, I want to say, or is it 39? I would have been fine with that as well. But no, it's the it's the Brian De Palma Scarface. Yeah. One sign me up 100%. Honestly, like I don't if there is a character in this that you couldn't do a spin-off based on and make it really interesting, I I don't know who you'd point to. They're they're all compelling, interesting characters. So Let's see. Yeah, so the movie's rated PG 13, so is this video. And this video is not going to contain any clips. And this is my first viewing, but I'm definitely going to be re watching it. Honestly, if not, you know, theater price is kind of steep, but otherwise, I, I could watch this again like tomorrow. So the plot. We are two years into Bruce Wayne's, let's go with Crusade, as Batman, and he is trying to, and a new threat arises, and he has to figure out how to deal with the Riddler, and he might just work with Selina Kyle, aka Catwoman, and I think, yeah, the bat and the cat will have to team up to catch the rat, and that brings us to, yeah, so before this movie came out, if we're being brutally honest, The Dark Knight is the only live-action solo Batman movie, in my opinion, as excellent as the animated series and animated solo movies are at their best, and I haven't even watched all that much of the animated series or animated solo movies. I've watched all of the Batman live-action movies multiple times, well, it's not occurred only once. This movie is the second excellent solo Batman movie. Now... Yeah, so, 
I'm going to briefly talk about the writing. This was written by Matt Reeves and Peter Craig. I have to admit, I really don't know. Let's see. Yeah, this is this is the first thing that Matt Reeves has written that I've actually watched. Yes, I know, I know. Gotta watch the Planet of the Apes. I, maybe I will at some point. Peter Craig did write both parts of The Hunger Games, Mockingjay and The Town, which are quite good. Not the best scripts ever, but very good. I, it's it's pretty wild that it took until now before we got a Batman who does very much detective work, considering in the comics that is literally his thing. He's the world's greatest detective. But yeah, he's, I, I, I've seen that some people say that he doesn't, they didn't think he did enough detective work in this. I don't, to each their own. I thought he did a really great job. He, like, it, there are times where, like, He'll, he'll pick up something, and he'll show it to Gordon, and maybe another cop and something, and they'll be like, okay, so... And just, like, he'll interrupt and say, oh, I know the answer. You know, he's, he's that kid in class. Me, teacher, I know the answer. Just, I, I thought it was really cool. I, I thought he did a really... Yeah. The writing in general, the characters are very credible. The, the details of the world feel, you know, the world feels lived in. And that, you know, one of the things that causes that is the writing. So plot twists, I could see, I think an argument could be made that there's maybe a one or two too many. I don't, I, I really don't think any of them are bad. They're all quite good. I, I didn't guess any of them. I, no, I, I would say they're, they're, they do a good job of keeping them difficult to, to guess. And I'll actually, I'll admit, like, there's one, after I watched the movie, I went back and thought, oh, yeah, they did kind of, they they gave us a clue, and, and like, maybe I subconsciously picked up on it, but I didn't, I didn't sit there thinking, oh, so that's what's going to happen. And the direction is also quite good, and, yes, this is the first thing Matt Reeves has directed. Oh, wait, I... Second thing, Cloverfield, which is good for what it is. You know, it's not it's not Shakespeare, but sometimes you just need kind of trash entertainment. You know, it knows what it is. It's not trying to be this just like you know, I, I feel like that's when it gets frustrating. When when you when you're trying to enjoy a piece of trash and it's like got delusions of grandeur. It's it's convinced that it's some masterpiece that's just, you know, no. It knows what it is. It has fun. We had, you know, if, if you're in the right mindset and you don't get, like, motion sickness, obviously, it's it's plenty fun to watch. You know, the, the frustrating thing is the the J.J. Abrams-ness of it. Anyway, yeah, I, I think he did a, you know, obviously I think this is a substantially better movie. I, I think I've made that clear by now. And yeah, he directed six. Let's see. Yeah, he he directed TV for six different shows, none of which I have. Right, but yeah, he he did some Felicity, so that's how JJ knows him. So, but but yeah, the the direction like the everybody feels every part of this world really feels credible people walk talk and behave the way that you would expect you know not always the way normal you know the people in the real world would but it doesn't feel like a fiction and the, the movie finds a good balance between like there's some stuff in in this movie that you know like if it was in a movie let's say 25 years ago people would have been like that's way too comic booky but they find a balance between something comic booky and something very gritty and real 
I've seen some people say that it's too derivative, you know, feels like if they they made uh they made a David Fincher, you know, it's 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 the it's seven meets Zodiac, but they plop Batman, you know, Batman's one of the detectives. There's definitely some of that going on, for sure. This is definitely a movie that like if if Matt Reeves wasn't already a hugely successful director, this would really feel like, oh wow, he is he's kind of obsessed with with David Fincher, isn't he? But you know, I mean, he doesn't need to. You know, let's see, he did he do? Yeah, two Planet of the Apes movies. So he doesn't. You know, he's and and now Bat. You know, yeah, Batman. So. He's he's not like having just an impossible time finding work. Now I'm not going to give away whether the ending is happy or sad, but it fits with what came before. I quite like the ending. It doesn't rely on Deus Ex Machina or other convenient writing. <sighs> Technically, there is not a post credits scene there is something that appears at the very end of the credits but if you're not like you it's not something you need to see yeah the movie never lost my interest i would definitely say like if you if when you think of of Batman something if if it's very important to you that the action is like really top-notch this might not be you know this is I, th I think Christopher Nolan found a better balance between like the this kind of deep and yeah depth yeah yeah depth and grittiness and then this more kind of shallow you know the the action scenes and such there's not a huge amount of action in this movie it is not paced like an action movie it's paced like of um m you know murder mystery it's it's not a who done it as much as who going to die next uh, yeah and and why and and yeah like it it's it's a it's a you know they're they're trying to figure out who is the Riddler going to kill next. You know that's that's the only way to stop him is to try to figure out who he's going to kill next so you can get there before he kills them. And yeah, the movie does you know for, for that it it has really perfect pacing. But yeah, the it's really not paced as a, as an action movie. It's it's really it's the only of these that has this. That lets the pacing be be. The, I I I love it, but for sure, like if if the action scenes are a huge deal for you, it's this might be a bit of a, a frustrating experience. The way the action is handled is fine. I've seen some say that it felt like Matt Reeves was basically being told you have to have some action in here. Like you can't have this long of a movie with without action so that has to be I'm not sure I would qu go quite that far but I see what they mean for sure there's like it it doesn't always feel completely organic some people didn't like the narration I thought it worked fine so Robert Pattinson it's, I I'm not going to spend forever talking about how it's ridiculous how long people have hated him for Twilight because he has done so much great acting since then. He's redefined himself multiple times over since then. The I, I never really bought into the idea that he was that that the like this idea that the casting the yeah that he was miscast that never really made a lot of sense to me, but. Yeah, you know, 
I, th I thought he did great. I, I understand why some people thought that it wasn't completely, you know, it's it's not quite the same. There, there are some aspects that are different. Zoe Kravitz was spot on as Selena Kyle. This is, like, we finally have a definitive Catwoman. You know, I, I was okay with the Dark Knight Rises version. They they got a lot closer than the the how how did they manage to make two movies where Selena Kyle is a cat zombie? I I I don't know how you how who in Hollywood was like, okay, I I think Let's let's be honest here. The thing that worked about Batman Returns was the cat zombie. Okay, let's let's not. We all know this. Okay, maybe not everybody's brave enough to say it out loud, but we all know that that's what worked. Anyway, yeah, this this is exactly the way you you know you do Catwoman. She and and Pattinson have such great chemistry, and the this kind of will they won't they the sexual tension just. So good. I, it's, uh, you know, the, the, um, I, I watched the movie with a friend of mine, and, uh, you know, we both liked Anne Hathaway's take on Catwoman, but Anne Hathaway is too sweet of a person to be completely convincing as Catwoman. Zoe Kravitz, I have to admit, I haven't seen her in that much, although this is apparently the second time. She, she was also Catwoman in the Lego Batman movie. That's awesome. I, yeah. She was Mary Jane in Into the Spider-Verse. I mean, I didn't particularly like her in First Class, but I don't think that was her fault. It's, yeah, you know, she she does really great here. She really does project sexuality in a in a very like and and uses that as a tool. You know, it it lowers you know, some sometimes she can get very close to men. Because she can get them to lower her, lower their guard. So, yeah. Now, apparently, let's see. So, Isa Gonzalez, Ana de Armas, Ana John Common, now Emmanuel Estuvicanda, Ella Balinska, all screen test, and Zazi Beats auditioned. And yeah, I let's see. I do not know Ella Balinska. All of these women would have been able to do a great job, but I, yeah, I, I would have been happy with, with any of them as well, but now that I've seen Zoe Kravitz, yeah, I, I, I really hope they don't, like, recast, like, I doubt that there's not, they're not going to recast her from, like, ah, oh, you know, that was not a good performance. Pe oh, people didn't like seeing you and, you know, Pattinson on screen at all. That's not going to happen, but I hope there's not like a scheduling conflict or something that forces them to recast. I, you know, I think this is what this is like with how, you know, originally the the Terminator they were going to film it like months earlier or an entire year early something, but they had to wait. I want to say it was for Schwarzenegger. And they did the right thing, you know, the movie wouldn't be what it is without him. I think an, an argument for that could be made for, for Kravitz. Paul Dano is so freaking good as the Riddler. It's pretty ridiculous that it took this long before he played a serial killer. It's just, yeah, taking lives. He, it was only a very small part in that movie, but yeah, he's just, he's... He's so good. I, I don't know, maybe he was worried about getting typecast because it really is just so, yeah. I, I've seen some people say that he's the, the best Batman villain in live action since he's the Ledger's Joker. I would have to agree. I, you know, so, Some people say, oh, he doesn't quite beat Heath Ledger's Joker. I mean, I don't think... I don't think it's completely fair to compare them because the way they're presented in the movies is very, very different. But 
like okay if i like let's say you know i had to i had to choose one one of these two movies is going to be the only batman movie that i watch again overall yeah it's it's dark knight but th this does come extremely close jeffrey wright makes a great james gordon i've seen some people not not everybody loves john Turturro's carmen falcone i thought he did great Peter Sarsgaard, Andy Serkis, Colin Farrell, it's, it's, yeah, they're all so, so great, it's just, the casting is fantastic. Now, that brings us to the cinematography, which is handled by director of photography Greg Fraser. Now, he, yeah, so, he did DP the first Dune, or the, yeah, the 2021 Dune. He is DPing the uh, part two, it's called. It's coming out in 23. Right, he DP'd Rogue One, which there's there's some incredible cinematography in, in that movie. Snow White and the Huntsman also has some really great stuff. Right, and he worked with the director on Let Me In. Now, yeah, uh, he he made some really, like, some really bold choices in this. Like, there's, you know, you see a little bit of, in, in the trailers of the car chase. Yes, they attached the camera to the side of the car, sometimes... It at an angle so it films the the windshield. Now, uh, uh, wow, I am. My brain has already gone to sleep. Not the wind. The rear view mirror, I think it's called. Yeah, and just yeah, stuff stuff like this. I'm not saying we've never seen that before. We've seen it before, but we've never seen it. In a movie like this, like you know, they attached cameras to to cars for the you know the Bourne sequels, for example, and that also worked out really well. But yeah, there's just some absolutely astonishing shots. The editing was handled by William Hoy, and yeah, so he also edited the, some of the. Planet of the Apes, so he's also worked with the director before. He helped edit, or he edited Watchmen, which has some fantastic editing. Sucker Punch is not a great movie, but it does have some great editing. 300. Let's see. What else? Dances with Wolves, also great. Yeah. Right, and Tyler Nelson, who, yeah, okay, and yeah, the, the editing is really great, like, no scene is too long, I, there's no scene that I would point to and say, like, that should really have been trimmed down for, yeah, there's no scene that should just be omitted, there are no issues with like structural editing. Now, there's some really great special effects, really great stunts, and yeah. So the the score is handled by Michael Giacchino. Giacchino, Giacchino, I guess it's. I, it's been a while. Anyway, yes, you know, Spider-Man No Way Home, Into the Spider-Verse, Captain America, Winter Soldier. Oh, right, for some of these he's musician, not uh, it's, uh, not composer. But anyway, yeah, he he does a really great job here. You know, it's it's difficult to come up with something that sounds like Batman that hasn't been done at all before. And it's, there are times where it does sound a lot like something we have heard before, but a lot of the time, it's original. 
some great sound design, some of the gadgets and such make noises that, yeah. Now, as far as the pacing goes, some people say that the nearly three hours fly by, others say it feels as long as it is or longer. I personally didn't feel like it was, it, it didn't feel like a long movie. Yeah, I, I would say I'm, I'm much closer to feeling like it just flew by. Now, you know, if you if you watch this in a movie theater, I, I don't know how you're going to feel about, like, walking out or something, but hypothetically, if, you, if you're fine with that, or if you happen to watch it somewhere that, you know, I, I'm not 100% certain when this is going to hit streaming, if the first... 30 to 45 minutes if if that doesn't really feel like your kind of thing I'm not sure I would really say the rest of the movie would win you over so the the best element of this movie is just you know we finally have a Batman who's a detective we find it, it feels like you know yeah I I'm not gonna claim that there's nothing derivative about the movie at all but it, it's a different Batman, and it just, it's a Batman that, I've read a lot of Batman comics that, if, if you adapted them, they would end up looking like this movie, you know. So, let's see, so, let's see, the worst aspect, I don't think the following is a big deal, but... I would definitely say, I think, hypothetically, if this had been the first Batman movie that anybody saw, then I don't think this would be a problem at all. But today, there are expectations for action scenes in Batman movies, and the general expectation, again, didn't bother me, but it's definitely going to bother some people. I've already heard some people that were bothered by it. There is less action... It is less spectacular, it is less grand. It's not bad, but it is infrequent and smaller scale. And just, it makes sense for this. Like, this is not really, th this is not the Batman that teams up with Superman and saves the world. This is the Batman who, you know, he's been doing it for two years. It's not, it's not his first day, but he doesn't have everything figured out. And... Yeah, it just, it wouldn't make sense for it to be as big as we've seen in other recent, uh, yeah. And, yeah, I was most looking forward to how different it is from the other Batman movies and the cinematography, and the movie exceeded my expectations. The trailers definitely give away too much. If, if you've somehow made it this far without watching a single trailer, I would say keep keep that up. Don't watch a trailer before you watch this movie. Unless, like, if you do, if you do, just try not to think about the things. Because just, yeah, some of the stuff in the trailers happens at the end of the movie. Wow. Anyway, but at the same time, the trailers do give a really good idea of what the movie is like. And I didn't personally feel spoiled. I wasn't sitting around waiting for specific things from the trailers to happen. The cover and poster are quite good. I haven't seen ones that give too much away. So, this has an 86% on the tomato meter, which means it's certified fresh, and a 95% audience score. So, of the 226 critic reviews, 195 of them are fresh. An average rating of 7.80 out of 10. And the audience, let's see, yes, yeah, so and 95% gave it 3.5 stars or higher. Over 250 verified ratings, and the average rating is 4.7 out of 5. On Metacritic, it has a 72 out of 100. On IMDb, it has an 8.8 nine holy crap out of ten yeah and when I last checked there were 331 
IMDb user reviews and I'm just really quickly gonna go through so of the people who voted it specific ratings out of 10 1 out of 10 16 people 2 out of 10 7 3 out of 10 3 4 out of 10 2 5 out of 10 8 6 out of 10 12 7 out of 10 4 8 out of 10 24 9 out of 10 54 and yes that does mean that the amount of people who gave it 10 out of 10 when they wrote the review is 257 this is a popular movie is what I'm trying to say here 59.6 percent of all the votes or 10,225 out of 17,000 voted 10 17.8 voted 9, 10.7 voted 8 but 3.7 or 641 people did vote 1 and yeah uh, it's definitely it's a hard PG-13 like it it kind of wants to be an R and there are times where it's awkward how it's just barely censored because they know that it is you know they can't get as many people to come go, to come see the movie if they make it an R and yeah so I have some let's see some other notes yeah so some people say it's the scariest Batman movie yet this Batman is a weird recluse. This Riddler, ah, I mentioned that. Colin Farrell is doing a De Niro impression, but it works. This is a Batman who has, really hasn't recovered from his parents' death. Gotham City feels lived in. Something that not everybody will like is that it's a long movie, not based, like, for an example, a an MCU movie or a detective movie. There's no one standout action scene. Batman takes a lot of damage, walks it off, which is hard to believe. To a little connection between Bruce and Alfred. Some say it's perfect, it, at least as good as CDK, maybe better. And the Riddler is like Jigsaw from Saw at times, yeah. That is it for the review itself. So, yeah, I am giving this, uh, let's see, got to figure out if, I guess at the very end of the day, I land, yes, it, I, I give this, nine incredibly well done shots out of ten and that brings us to the spoiler sections there we go so let's see spoiler and starting with notes taken while watching so notepad time I like how low-key the opening titles and logos are. Very creepy opening with the binoculars and Ave Maria playing. And I really like that while we start, like, at first I wasn't sure if this was the a, a Batman POV or a Riddler POV. And it didn't take a huge amount of time for me to learn. But we do later see Batman spying on people. And it, it's incredibly creepy how the, the Riddler is just standing there. You know, at first, we can't tell that he's there. But then it becomes clear to us that, yep, yeah, he's standing there. And he just stands there for, like, maybe a minute after we realize he's standing there before he attacks uh, uh, Mitchell, I want to say the name was. Some people have said the narration is like Rorschach. Yeah, kind of. But it works. It works much, you know. I am not the biggest fan of the Watchmen movie. I am a really big fan of the comic. Which is why I don't like the movie that much. And... Yeah, so the... Like in Glass, we have, you know, young people who will punch someone on camera... I, I thought it worked how the, there was this one kid who was a, ah, what's the word? It's right on the tip of my tongue. He's like, he's not quite in the game yet, 
and he actually does end up, he doesn't punch the guy, and he, let's see, he did some, I think he, he tried to warn Batman when someone else was attacking, something like that, and I'm guessing, like, the reason only half of his face is painted is because he hasn't gone through the initiation yet, which also works as a signal to the audience that he's not all in on this, so it's a, it's a great bit of, just, yeah. And we see Batman beating up the gang members. The bit where he electrifies, uh, electri not electrocute, right? Because electrocute means kill via electricity. Anyway, he gives him the, the shot. That was really messed up. Wow. I really like that this is not a flawless fighter of a Batman. Like, he does get hit. He sometimes, like, when... When, when he's at the club and Oz stops the, the, what's it called? Yeah, you know, yeah. Oz manages to, to stop them from shooting. I'm not sure Batman would have survived if Oz hadn't gotten there to stop them from shooting. I like the detail that there's this, you know, the, the guy that was going to get hit by the gang, you know, ultimately he got restrained by the gang, but I don't think anybody actually hit him. He's afraid of Batman. I want to make sure I... Let's see, I made a note. When I walked out of Batman v Superman after the credits had fully rolled, I didn't want Batman, the Batman I just watched, to form the Justice League. I wanted him to get psychiatric attention. I felt the same way with this movie, but this time the movie clearly agrees with me. This is not, you know, he's not well. You know, by the end of the movie, he realizes that, and he's going to try to be better. Uh, yeah, he's trying. Yeah, be less obsessive about it, and be less. Yeah, be more careful not to inspire people in the wrong way. I like the detail that a lot of the cops don't like Batman, don't trust him. Gordon's the one, and we realize that the son found Mitchell dead. And it's such a, like, that that detail that the first time we see the kid and the first time that we see Mitchell, the kid is, like, dressed as something for Halloween. And he's got, like, this fake sword, and he fake stabs his father, who fake dies in front of him, to, to you know, because kids dig that, you know, when you play along. And, and now he finds him actually dead. So that's, yeah, that's really, really nasty. And, uh, you know, we open on Halloween night. And... Yeah, we see that Batman takes detailed notes. You know, yeah, writes detailed notes. And he records everything he sees on video on these contact lenses. I really loved... Because the first time... Like, when he's just moving through the scene at first and he's like looking at evidence and such you're sitting there you're as creeped out as the cops are because like why is he staring like that like that's just so creepy and then you know 10 minutes later you find out oh he was recording everything he has to rest on the thing for a few seconds to to fully you know the, the human eye can take in a lot of information but but a camera isn't going to you know it's it's going to be blurry if you yeah because there isn't a brain interpreting what there there's nothing equivalent to the human brain interpreting the images you get from a camera and we're told that Batman's actually basically running you know s slowly running out of money because he's not careful about, yeah and. Yeah, and, and the, you know, the girl that Mitchell was with leads into Oz. And I, I kind of like that at, there are times in this movie where we see Batman walk. Like, the, uh, you know, he's not hidden all the time the way that he is in a lot of these. Yeah. The, the, uh, 
you know, it, I, I would say in the Nolan movies, he always, when, when you saw him in the suit, he was always striking a pose or saying something compelling or, you know, f engaging in a fight or something. But in this, there are times where you just see, you know, it's kind of just, you you get no it's it's at the end of the day it's a facade like he he likes to do this to to scare people but he is actually he is human under there i quite like the first time batman sees selena kyle you know and and with oz and like selena looks at the the photos Batman looks at the photos, looks at Selena looking at the photos, and Oz just, yeah, it's it's some really great, like clearly there's more going on here, and yeah, and then we see Batman, you know, spying on, and you know he he sees, you know, Selena start to undress. And he doesn't stop watching her. You know, he is... This is this is seriously creepy. You know, I... I was a little bit worried that maybe the movie's... You know, it's, it's a way for the movie to get her in her underwear. But, you know, later on she does realize that he, he spied on her. And, you know, I... She could have made a bigger deal out of it. But she clearly, like... She is a little creeped out by it, and she does think that there was something... Yeah, you know. And I like how there's this... There's a there's a sexual element to when, when Batman and Catwoman fight. You know, he, he catches her when, you know, she... She opened the safe, which... You know, we... we I don't think anybody told her that it was unbreakable. And and like during the fight, like there's this point where like let me think, I think she ends up on her back on a table or something and he's like standing over her. so so there's this, you know, and and again, that would be extremely creepy if she was like if if there was any like let's be honest, she can, you know, there there are they're basically equal in in fighting ability like if she really badly wants to defeat him she can and yeah he he casually drops the you know no, notes that oh he spied on her earlier and she has to yeah the she has the lenses in so she has to be careful that nobody realizes she has lenses in but she does have to focus her eyes on you know she has to continue looking at certain things and we realize half the DA office is in the club in the club so if one of them was having a sandwich they'd be having a club in the club in the club Yeah, the, the whole scene with Selena undercover is very tense. And let's see. There we go. So, what on earth does that mean? Um. Okay, I swear I'm not going to spend forever trying to de decipher my note here. Let's see. Right, right. Uh, yeah, a lot of the time when we see Bat, not always, but a lot of the time when we see Batman in other Batman movies, he's doing a, you know, it's going well for him. And in this movie, there are major mistakes. It, it almost goes completely wrong several times. I I really quite appreciate that. And, you know, we, we see the the Mitchell funeral and we see Riddler supporters protesting. 
I have to admit, I did not realize at that time that the end of the movie was going to feature Riddler supporters with guns, uh, you know, about to kill civilians. But it's, you know, that's, it's a clue. It's a clue right there. You know, they already know that the Riddler killed him. You know, and they're, they're not just standing there saying Mitchell was a bad person. They're standing, you know, they, one of them has like a sign with a question mark on it. One, one of them has a sign that says no more lies. You know, they know the Riddler killed this guy, wrote no more lies on the tape, and they're celebrating him. I, I'm not saying every single one of them is going to be willing to carry out murder themselves, but, like, let's let's say that there are a hundred people at that protest. Let's say that five percent of them are, you know, so out there that they themselves are willing to grab a gun and shoot people that the the Riddler has told them deserve it. That's five people, and actually, is that... Now, I guess there's seven or eight there at the end, but yeah, you know, it's... Let's see. And I also quite like the detail. That's when Bruce Wayne comes out, you know. He... Like, if Batman went to the funeral, that would be weird, but he realizes that there might be information there. He might be able to find out something. Yeah. I quite liked, you know, Bruce manages to save the the Mitchell... I'm almost certain it's... Yeah. I, I was about to say the now orphaned, but he does still have his mother. I'm almost 100% certain, but yeah. The, the fatherless Mitchell. And we find out that Thomas Wayne actually saved Falcone's life, turning his dinner table into an OR. Ave Maria plays three or four times in this, and I thought it worked really well. Like, it's, you know, e each time it's more creepy than serene, and yeah, it works really well. One of the cops that hates Batman actually loves Bruce Wayne, and he's like, oh, what, Mr. Wayne is, you know, I, th I thought that was quite a good, yeah, and, and, you know, Bruce has no way, he has no idea how to handle it. It's like, you know, just because because he's not there yet. He's not. He's he's still he's still grieving his parents. He can't really. Yeah. And then Gil crashes the funeral with the car. And we see that the Riddler calls. Gil's hand phone. I mean, dude's gonna talk your ear off. Just let it go to voicemail. And I, you know, I already mentioned that, you know, some people have pointed out he's. Riddler's like Jigsaw. That I mean, it's not literally the reverse bear trap meant for capturing the elusive reverse bear on Gil's neck there, but. If it's not meant to make us think of that, I would be very surprised. And yeah, Gil has to answer three riddles. And that last one, it's not so much that he doesn't know the answer, it's that he's terrified of what will happen to his family. If, which is also, I, I thought that was a great, like, you know, he's, he's like, no, I, I can't say it. And Batman's like, You'll die if not. And he responds, I'll die either way. But if I tell it, I, you know, I'm doing this to protect my family. Something like that. You know, I, I quite like, you know, it's, it's so frustrating when in that situation, the person is just behaving irrationally just because that's the way to my intention, you know. And we see Batman fighting some of the, the cops. And they actually fire on him, even though, like, he wasn't killing anyone. So that's, yeah. Let's see the, um, what's the other thing? Right, the, the reveal on the Batmobile was awesome. Like, 
right of a it's like a creature out of a horror movie. And I really love that like at first, you know, you think, oh, it's gonna be this badass, you know, oh no, it actually it didn't work at first. You know, so it is this thing of like Batman every so often it really looks like he might lose, and sometimes he he comes extremely close to losing. Anyway, so the yeah. Great car chase. And yeah, the the riddle for Batman, we get some instant messaging, which is even creepier than it actually was. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it was just me. Maybe I was just really unlucky that I kept getting found by weirdos who wrote really weird, creepy things to me. Anyway. Yeah, and and Alfred blew up because of the I I I honestly didn't uh I thought that it would turn out that you know, I'm I mean okay, ultimately he survived. But I, I didn't think that they were gonna you know, and I like you know, there's there's multiple people who tell Bruce I've been trying to reach you. You know, it's 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 not the most subtle script in the world. You know, Rayal says I've been trying to reach you. Ends up getting shot. The uh, Dory, um, I don't I don't know where. I don't know how they went about finding Dory, but yeah, Dory, you know. But trying to reach Bruce, you know, Alfred got blown up, and I guess I'll keep calling him Riddler. <laughs> also says been trying to reach you, and also has you know has been killing people. Bruce makes a conspiracy wall on the floor where there's more space for it. I quite liked the scene of Batman and Catwoman arguing. Like, you know, he's like, "Oh, you made you made some really bad choices," and she's like, "Choices? Okay, I don't know who you are, but clearly you had a privileged upbringing." And we find out that Catwoman is the daughter of Falcone, who didn't take care of her, who didn't take any responsibility for her. And we actually find out, you know, once once he realizes, yeah, he he did he did kill. Her mother and now he's going to kill her because that's that's how he solves that kind of problem and yeah you know before before meeting Catwoman Batman doesn't in in this movie doesn't really seem to care about poor people he doesn't believe that you know poor people maybe don't have the luxury of choices that aren't that are illegal in all circumstances. Anyway, let's see. Yeah, you know, we find out that Thomas Wayne wasn't killed by a random mugger. He was killed who who had no chill. He was killed by Okay, was it Falcone or was it Maroni? Now I'm struggling to remember one of them, you know. And uh, yeah, because he was going to go to the cops and confess. And we see that Catwoman is beating up Mackenzie. Evidently, she did think that the bat signal was a pager. And and she actually pushed him over. You know, she was gonna let him drop to his death from her pushing him over. Yeah. Wait, Batman cut the power? Bats are animals. How could they cut the power? I, I know it's 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 such a good reference though I I I take any excuse to make that reference 
and yeah, so the the uh, the gunfight that lights up the hallway is so freaking cool. It's one of the coolest sequences I've seen in an extremely long time. It's just so I I didn't realize when I saw the trailer that I mean, I mean it makes sense. Yeah, the power is out, so there's no light other than the the um gun ah I forget what it's called but yeah when when a when a gun is fired that briefly lights up the you know and and Batman doesn't have any I mean I'm guessing he's probably got some kind of night vision thing on the yeah and and you know someone shot Falcone and we find out you know yeah that was it was the Riddler and he legitimately felt like Batman followed his command or request and yeah the Riddler's at the diner giving himself in and yeah we see like like we saw in the trailers or at least one of the trailers there is a question mark in the the coffee foam in the non-foam coffee cup which I think just means that the barista had no clue how to spell his name but felt bad about leaving it blank and you know Batman discovers something important so tells Gordon I need you to come take a look at this is not that is that not the cutest kid you've ever seen I mean, if Riddler was looking up cute kittens, maybe he wouldn't spend so much time obsessing over murdery things. So, I mean, honestly, Riddler is like Q if Q was right and, you know, actually, you know, not just trying to make money off. Yeah. I, I kind of uh, I appreciate that. I... Like, I've seen versions of Riddler that are very reminiscent, but I would definitely say that at least some of this depiction is inspired by the QAnon movement. And we're told uh, Riddler's awful life as an orphan how it was, much, was much worse than Bruce's. And Riddler was inspired by Batman. When we saw in the trailers Batman saying, what have you done? We thought, oh, great, we're going to get another impossible to, to understand Batman voice. But no, you know, yeah, he yells, what is that? But by then, he's already said it twice before. And the first time he says it, it is 100%. Like, you could you could use it as a, as a like, part of a hearing test or something. You, he's... He enunciates really clear. I, I don't know. It, it sounded that, that that way to me, at least. So I really appreciate that. I, I don't think there was a single time. It's not completely fair because I've watched these movies with subtitles. Every movie, every movie in my country is subtitled, but even the ones in our own language. Now, yeah. So so the Riddler starts singing Ave Maria, and Batman is really not a fan, but it's kind of rude him to shout like that. And we see Bella get shot, and the Twilight haters rejoice. Oh, wait, 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 different Bella. I guess I should make it clear. No, I, I am not a Twilight fan. And, yeah, I, I quite enjoyed seeing Batman taking down Riddler followers and Catwoman saving him at the very last minute. Like, it really was. If she had not shown up, he was dead. So, Riddler and Arkham, you know, getting a sort of pep talk from someone. I mean, that's gotta be the Joker. I was... I was dreading that they were gonna, like, reveal it's Arthur Fleck or something, but no, it's... I mean, ultimately, we don't know. It could be any, but it's almost definitely the Joker. I guess if just... If it means that the Joker will 
work with Riddler and or other villains, maybe that could be interesting. I, just, I really don't think we need another Joker already. And yeah, Catwoman leaves town and they don't kiss this time. They, they kiss twice, if I recall, but this third time, yeah. And the only thing that there is post credits is the, the Riddler instant messaging thing that says goodbye again, which I don't know, maybe it was just me, but the first time, you know, when I watched the movie itself, and it just, yeah. Can't goodbye be one word? I kind of read it as him saying good bye you know as two you know he's saying that's good and then saying you know like it might as well have been good now so long or something but I could be wrong and let's see yeah I I hope I'm I'm glad that the at the very least the Joker in this didn't play a big part. I just I really don't think like we just got Joaquin Phoenix excellent take. There have been too many Jokers in recent live action. I really hope that they they don't. I mean it could just turn out not not all of these end up being something. Some of them are just there as a, a neat little uh, you know thing. So yeah. I don't know if they have an incredible idea but I especially like from watching the trailers from knowing how many villain characters anyway I don't think they had too many villain characters I worried that it there was going to be but somehow they managed to not have too many villain characters if there was room for everyone anyway that is it for this video so please comment down below let me know did you like this version if not or if you did what do you hope to see in the sequels if you didn't what is the like what comic or game you know which which version or animated yeah which batman would you like to see them do a movie of and yeah so if you like this video, please comment, thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page, one or more links to stuff like relevant playlists they suggest that you watch on screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie and uh, and one talking about the most recent episode that I personally watched of the the Mandalorian. My brain is 100%. I'm, I'm going to bed really soon, but my brain has beat me to it. Anyway, recently, the, video, the review and thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if you want my videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog, as well as catch my video next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed reaching and recording, and I'll catch you next time.